and basically the uh, cellar was approximately 18 by 11, five feet tall. It had three different trap doors, one in the wall from their bedroom that went into a little hallway, false hallway. Then there was a, in the floor there were four boards that lifted up and you went down to an anti-cellar, which was about four by four. And then another door opened, and the, every, every door was insulated so you couldn't hear noise if you knocked, you wouldn't hear the resonance. And inside there were only one, not a window, but a hall in between the ceiling and the wall, once in the far side. And that opened up to the outside. From there we got the air, and from there we got light. It was sort of overgrown with weeds and stuff, so from the outside you couldn't. But what that meant is that we couldn't have a light inside because it would be shown outside. Fortunately, there weren't a lot of people out because it was in a desert, you know, in a farm area. And the way it worked is that empty cellar, we had two buckets, and if you want to go to the bathroom, that's where you went. Uh, at night, once it got real dark, Mr. Sokol would open up the trap doors and hand us down a bucket of water and a bucket of soup and if there was some bread. And he would pick up the two buckets of waste and empty them and give them back to us. And that was every day. Basically, all food was rationed. And since we were dead, we didn't have ration cards. So the only food we had was what he grew plus whenever you could buy something in the black market, a, a loaf of bread. Uh, the soup consisted of, he grew beets, cabbage, and potatoes. So every day we'd have either cabbage soup or beet soup or potato soup. And when he felt generous, there would be a combination of. And like I said, bread was only, he, Mr. Sokol was a very nice man me rest in peace, but normally it would take like maybe once every three or four weeks to get a loaf of bread. On Passover he would bring two or three loaves of bread because he knew that my father or my uncle would need it. We would sit there all day. There were two benches, one on each side. We would sit. In the middle there was like a crate and we would do whatever we could, play games. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Sokol, Sokol had two daughters and two sons. One son was this Jishik, the one that walked my sisters to the place there, was uh, taken to the army by the Germans. And he wound up, he still lives in Germany, he wound up in Germany. He never went back to Poland. So. To occupy our time, we would do whatever. Believe it or not, I was one of the better knitters among all the women and everything. And we would knit, whenever they could get some wool, we would knit things for Mr. and Mrs. Sokol, for the kids, to, to do something. The other family was a family by the name of Popovska. They were probably one of the non-religious families in Zelikov, but they were friends of the Sokols. And I guess Mr. Sokol figured he's risking his life for us, he might as well bring them in. They consisted of a husband and wife, a son in his 20s, three daughters, two in their 20s, and one was about 15 or 16. The fiance of one of their older daughters, and the fiancé's father, Vinograd was their name. Problem was Mr. Popovska, Gil Popovska was his name also. He suffered from tuberculosis, he kept on spitting up blood all the time, and he kept on smoking all the time. Now we didn't have money for anything, but for cigarettes he had money. And his son and the fiance also, same thing, 
That's the way life is. The two boys, the two men, kept on leaving the cellar every now and then. They said that they were going out to join the partisans. Uh, you can figure whatever you want where they went, but they always came back with cigarettes. Not bread, but cigarettes. And they came back with guns. And my dad was a very, very peaceful man. I mean, I think I told you we had a dog. For about three weeks he got rid of him because the dog almost bit a crook trying to rob us. That's, that's what my dad was. He argued with him to no end about the guns, but they wouldn't relent. In April of 1943, Mr. Popovska died of tuberculosis. Problem was, he died on Good Thursday, and the Catholics are very religious about that. From late Thursday to late Sunday, you don't do anything, family comes. We couldn't bury him till Sunday night. After the war, when we were examined, the doctors couldn't believe that we didn't have TB because we were in such close quarters and TB is very contagious. But life continued, uh, food was very scarce. Mr. Sokol came, became very tired of us because the money was running out and we, came, we became tired of us when we went into hiding, we thought maybe a, a month, maybe six months, not, not so long. But there was no, no way out. You, you couldn't do anything.